Hey, Shay. Howdy. Well, howdy. And welcome back to another episode of Beer and Back Again. Shay, where are we today? We're at Seasider on Vancouver Island, and I've never been more excited. To learn about cider? To learn about cider and learn about what these turn into drinkable things. Is your sour? Mine tastes like an apple. Mine tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Welcome to Seaside Farm and Cider House. Looks like them boys have gotten a little lost from the brewery, but they couldn't have picked a better location to get the insider information on this appealing beverage. Let's join them and the master now. So my name is Kristen Needham, and I'm the founder, still the owner, and uh, the cider master here, and general manager, so I wear a few hats. I don't have to clean the tanks anymore. <laughs> I've got a great team that does that, and I've got a great team of cider technicians um, to, to who who really do the day in day out um, all the work, all the hard work that goes into making a cider. Yeah, everything that we've seen here is like super extensive. Like not even just like the size of the farm, but you employ so many people here. Did it always was it always like that, or was it just you? Or? Yeah, no, it's really funny to think back on the inception. So the idea started about 20 years ago or more, when my um, husband at the time, Bruce, we came up with the idea of starting a cidery on a farm. And in those, um, in that planning stage, we thought, well, he'll make the cider and I'll sell the cider and we won't need any staff, obviously. And uh, it didn't turn out that way. Hi, my name's Nicole, and I am the cider maker technician here at Seasider. Thank you for bringing us into the actual production facility here at Seasider, Nicole. Um, mm. Can you tell us what's going on in here? Behind me, these are our fermentation tanks. So everything on this side is pretty much raw juice that is being fermented by the yeast and turned into alcohol. And then everything on this side is finished blended ciders that are being chilled and carbonated. So you said that this side has essentially the apple juice. Yeah. Is that all really cider? Is it just, is it just alcoholic apple juice? Yes, it is, okay. yeah. It's just nature running its course. Yeah, exactly, the yeast fermenting the apple juice, and then we add the adjuncts that we want. If we want it to be cherry, we'll add cherry at the end and then filter it and move it over to that side. Starting from the beginning, um, we actually have those totes right outside. So that's where the juice comes from, in, in my world anyway. It's like, it's pressed either on site or at a different farm that we own or a partner farm, and then it's brought here. And so we take this juice and we pump it into the tank. We add um, well, some nutrient, some yeast, and just try to make the right environment for that yeast to ferment. And then we transfer that to another tank, and then we blend. So as you can see right here, I've been making the rum runner actually, and now I'm in the middle of filtering it into another tank. We pretty much do like three phases of filtration. I'm trying to think of a not nerdy technical way of saying that. <laughs> oh, but I love it. Some okay. other people might not understand, but go yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so go we do it. a coarse filtration, a medium filtration, and then a fine filtration. So I'm doing my medium, and then I'll be doing a fine filtration into one of the carbonation tanks. Okay. From there, it goes actually through the wall and into the bottler. And so then the packaging team takes over and they start bottling. The bubbles the, is the escaping gas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's... This is how little I know yeah, is what yeah, I'm trying yeah. to explain to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was like... Yeah, so the way fermentation works is yeast essentially eat sugar just like we do, and they poop out alcohol and they fart out CO2. And that's, that's, exactly that's essentially how I would describe thank it. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you for just explaining it to me like I need, like exactly how I need yeah. to know. In the cider world, we think about four different categories of apples sweets, sharps, bittersweets, and bitter sharps. Here at Sea Cider, we grow over 60 varieties. Um, we've got chisel jerseys, dabinets, Yarlington Mills. These are all either bitter sweets or bitter sharps that you would never ever see in the grocery I'm not store. Go buy those at no. the store yeah. <laughs> and not even at the farmers markets because they're really inedible. They're too astringent. And but that astringency, the tannins in the apple give the cider some really unique characteristics. They also 
contribute to the color of the cider. And so you can see between the Wild English and the Kings and Spies, the Wild English is much more amber in color. And that's a function of the tannins that are in the apples. So you can get some lovely, lovely amber colored cider just from using these particular varietals that have a lot of tannins in them. My name is Amelia. I'm the farm technician at Seasider. So we were just working in the pressing tent is where we grind up the apples and then press them into juice and juice them into totes, which then get brought up to the cider house. So so you're not just set in the like pressing, is it pressing room? Pressing, pressing tent. Pressing tent. Yeah, yeah, you're not just in the pressing tent. You're you're kind of all over the place. The juice caboose. The ju <laughs> now that's the name. That's what we're, yeah. We're right. gonna change it. Now, yeah, now, that, yeah, now that that's the juice caboose, uh, aside from that, uh, so you're kind of doing running around all over the place. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. So generally in the pressing tent is a two person operation. So there are two seasonal workers assigned to that every day. And then I'm running around. I cover their breaks, so I do some of the juicing and pressing as well, but I'm also making sure that they always have a supply of apples. We have harvesters out every day as well. So this is really important. Would you say that you like apples? Yeah. <laughs> is this, is this <laughs> everything you just said. <laughs> I, don't, I don't imagine you do much else that isn't involving apples. Yeah, it's very apple oriented. Um, I really do like apples. I actually, I went to school just for horticulture in general. Okay. So. I have a background in plant and gardening education, but not so specific to apples. We were told when we were walking down to the juice caboose that if you were to pick an apple off one of these trees, it wouldn't taste very good because these apples are specific to cider. Yeah. What would this actually taste like if I like took a bite out of one of these apples? <laughs> well, it'll be kind of luck of the draw of what row you're in. <laughs> if oh, you're in okay. a bitter row. <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> they're really astringent, the bitter apples. So I find they just suck all the moisture off of my tongue. And some of them are worse than others. Some of them you could kind of get away with eating and they're not terrible, but there are a few that as soon as I bite into them, I spit them out. No, I'm not gonna ask. You know, I am gonna. How many people own straw hats here, and why? And if Ooh. there's not that many, <laughs> why not? We actually have a collection of straw hats for employees. <laughs> when there's sun glare and you're harvesting high up in the trees, there are some hats in storage, and I've seen a couple people grab one when they need to protect their eyes. And when you say you've seen a couple people, you as well have just been like, <laughs> I, you know they need help there, I'm gonna pop a straw hat on. <laughs> Run yeah, out. yeah, they're, they're actually see. mandatory for certain oh, areas. That's all work. we wanted to hear. You, it's fine. You can lie. Flannel, this doesn't have to be a overall straw hat, uniform. Yeah, the, the uniform. The yes. <laughs> How do you make a consistent product when you've got different apples each year? We um, consistently use one of the champagne yeasts, um, 71B. It's a yeast that we like um, for some of the cider because it tends to induce a malolactic fermentation. Okay, can you explain that? Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. So with apple juice, the primary acid in the juice is malic acid. There are all sorts of different acids, but malic is a really harsh acid. If you were to just straight out ferment it and then bottle it, it would be a bit like drinking lemon juice. It'd just be just acidic, really yeah. very yeah. acidic. Malolactic fermentation converts malic acid to lactic acid, which is a softer acid. And so on the palate, it's not quite as sharp. It's more rounded. It's the same process that 
Chardonnay producers use to soften the Chardonnay. So by using that champagne yeast and it going through a malolactic fermentation, that we just soften the acid so it's more palatable. And that's what we found seems to work with the local, local apples that we use. Well, I'd like to thank you, and I'd also like to thank the community for building you up. Because, yeah. I mean, all I can say is thank you for having us here today. We've learned so much. Mm -hmm. It's like, hell, this guy hates beer. The, oh, this is like, easily the best video we've yeah, ever done. He, he, loved, I, he loved today. I was yeah. I was just soaking everything in, and he's just like a happy golden little retriever. I've powered through, I've powered through breweries here, but I am, I am enjoying myself today. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think, you know, hopefully, you know, again, you know, we want to change the way people think about cider. Cider deserves its own place on the shelf. There's yeah. something, there's a lot of really unique characteristics about cider, and we're just trying to, you know, spread, spread the cider joy, That's bottle it. by bottle. Did you have fun today, Shay? <laughs> you know what, I did have fun today. It was great to see how cider was made. Um, and now we're gonna get to enjoy a nice uh, tasting. Cheers to that. Cheers. And cheers to you. You come all back now, you hear? <laughs> oh my god, what did I just drink? That was incredible. Number three? Number why are you drinking number three? It was a top right. <laughs> she explained it perfectly. I know I heard it and then my instinctive was to grab that one. It's a one to six.